Hello Year 9 and Year 9 parents and carers. I'm just going to give a short presentation that I would normally do on the options evening to all of you in the, in the new hall. But of course, we're having to do things slightly, slightly differently this year. But the process still remains the same. And there's a lot of advice and guidance and we are still here to have those conversations uh, with yourself and with students if they're unsure about anything at all in the options process or any of the subjects. Um, we've had to shift the timeline slightly. The deadline still rate remains the same, about the 23rd of February. Um, but in terms of the options evening, that, that's had to shift again. So GCSEs, these are level two courses, uh, but we don't just offer GCSEs, we offer what we call technical awards as well. So those are BTECs or technical qualifications. They are both at the equivalent academic level, but there are differences to consider. Um, one that, that really isn't a, a concern at all is they're graded differently, but that's just, just the way they are, but it's still the same. So GCSEs are graded from nine to one on the new grading system. And in the technical awards, you get your distinction, distinction star, merits and passes. The key thing to consider between the two, and this is the important part, I think, is how they are taught the content and how they're assessed. So GCSEs are mostly final exams at the end of year 11, mostly. And the technical awards tend to be a mix of practical internal assessments and also an exam at the, not necessarily at the end, but after you finish that examination unit. So we have some choices over that about when we put that within your curriculum. And for some, it might be end of year 10, some at the start of year 11, but we make sure we put you in when you're ready and, and fully prepared by your subject teachers. Both technical and GCSEs are two year courses. And for the majority of subjects now, it is the same examination for everybody at the end. The three subjects that still have tiered papers of foundation and higher are maths, science and your MFL, so your French or Spanish. Now, that's not decided at the start of the course at all. That is decided really quite a way into the course through you doing a range of different tiers of papers and through those discussions with your uh, subject teachers. So that, that's not set. So the key thing to think about is what is the difference between some of the technical award subjects and some of the GCSEs? And does the style of the assessment, does one suit you better than the other? Does the way that actually the content is delivered, does that suit you better one way or another? OK, it might just be nothing to do with either of those and just the fact that they are the course that you are really interested in doing in terms of content. I've sent an electronic copy of the booklet to both yourselves and to students. I'm also posting this week uh, a hard copy of it because I had them all printed, ready to give them in due to time uh, when we came back. Um, but I'm now going to post those out. Um, it contains all the key contacts, which is really important. It contains the key dates. It has my contact in, as does this presentation. Uh, but also other key people might be your head of year, assistant head of year. They know how to get in contact with their tutors every day, uh, but it also might be Mrs. Carlin, who's our independent careers and advice um, guidance. So the book contains information about each course, and I would suggest that you do read that carefully, because sometimes the GCSEs, the content might be quite different to the curriculum that you've been following at Q Stage 3. And it's just making sure that it's actually what, what you expect. So my advice always is, number one, pick what you are interested in, pick what you enjoy, because it tends to be very clearly what you enjoy, it tends to also be a strength as well. And two years can be a long time if you are not on the right course for you. So think very carefully about what you're interested in, um, what your strengths are, and, and I'll go for those first and foremost every time. Now, you might need to think about which GCSEs are going to prepare you for a future career. Please don't worry too much about that because there are usually other opportunities at the end of year 11 to help you to get on to the right pathway for your next step. However, if you already know, and some of you will and many of you won't, then it would be useful to pick GCSEs that particularly you're going to continue with them onto A level or you know there's a post 16 course that you wish to do, then actually it would be useful to take it now at GCSE so you've got that foundation and that grounding and that progression. However, don't worry, don't panic. 
Um, there might be things that you want to go on and do post 16 that we don't offer and it won't mean that you can't go on to those courses at all. Have a look at the entry requirements. It's usually that you need a suite of GCSEs with certain grades. OK, it's also an opportunity to take new subjects and that can seem really exciting and it, and it is really exciting. But again, it's looking at what is that content um, as well. So there are new things that are on offer that you may not have, have realised or seen before. OK, and you have some choice over how you're going to be assessed. Going back to that GCSEs or technical awards, think about how do you perform best? If you pick the right assessment method for you, you're going to increase your chances of being as successful as you can. Now, the English Baccalaureate has been around now for, for a long time. And what it is, it's a suite of subjects that's recognised by the government and recognised by universities and employers as being a, a good balanced curriculum. And when they brought out the English Baccalaureate, it was on the back of them doing quite a bit of research about ensuring a breadth of curriculum and also looking at the impacts that that had. And they found that, particularly in studying a language, that um, how it uses your, your brain and your cognitive development would actually help you in other disciplines like maths and English as well. Now, we give a choice. What we ask though is every student takes at least one of the subjects from a humanities or a language to ensure they've got that breadth of curriculum into key stage four. We've always believed in having this, this broad curriculum. However, if you wish to have the suite of subjects for the English Baccalaureate that is recognised by employers and universities, um, you don't get a separate certificate for it, they don't, don't give anything extra out, then you will need to take a humanities and a, and a language. Okay, And we have many students that do, uh, but it is your decision. We ask that you take either a humanities or a, lang um, or a language to ensure you've got that breadth of curriculum. You've got core subjects. Maths, one GCSE, English, you will take English language and English literature, two separate GCSEs. Science can either be two GCSEs or three, and I'll talk about that in a moment. And then we have a core curriculum of PE, which again, we've got choices for you there as well, because it's really important to keep you active and healthy, um, that actually you can engage in activities that actually, you know, again, you enjoy and interest you. We cover PSHE and we cover that in tutor time and we have religion and worldviews as well, which we've had throughout the curriculum from year seven. And then at the end of year 10, we've always undertaken work experience. Last year it had to be done remotely um, and obviously we're quite a way away for you. So hopefully we can give you those placements in the workplace that give you a fantastic opportunity. So we've made a change to science um, now and again a change from where I originally spoke to you in an assembly before Christmas year now. Science is now actually part of the options process. What we have decided to do for a number of reasons, one being linked with the disruption um, and two being linked with having the correct amount of curriculum time for the number of GCSEs, we have now put the separate sciences within the options process. So everybody as their core would do the science trilogy. That covers your biology, chemistry and physics, but is equivalent to two GCSEs. And you have the equivalent curriculum time for two GCSEs. If you wish to take the three separate sciences, again, a, a GCSE in chemistry, biology and physics, then you will need to choose science as one of your four options. But that still gives you three options that you, you've got completely, you know, you've got free choice from. So the science department is asking you to think really carefully about that. You might need to talk to your science teacher or talk to Mrs. Inger, because really if you're taking the separate sciences, you need to be really passionate and have a real love, a love of your science, okay? But just so that you're aware, it will take one of your options, but it will mean that you have the correct amount of curriculum time for three GCSEs. And it will also mean that you won't have, as we've done previous years, and you might know from, from older brothers or sisters or cousins or friends, they were having an extra lesson after school once a week. We will now put that time within the curriculum. 
So have a look very carefully at that. Have a think. Any questions, talk to Mrs. Singer and your science teacher. So there are four choices for your core PE. So this isn't assessed. This doesn't give you a qualification, but you do have a, a choice. Um, you've got Sports Performance Academy for those that want to improve your performance actually in sport. You love competing and uh, maybe competitively. You've got sports leadership. You might enjoy coaching. You might enjoy leading sport. And that can lead to a level one coaching qualification. Healthy, active lifestyle, suitable for anybody who just really likes to keep fit. So that's more independent activities. And lifelong sport is really if you enjoy a bit of both team activities, individual sports, don't do it on a too competitive a, a level. There's quite a bit of variety there. OK. So you have four options. There are three option blocks or three options if you wish to take the separate sciences. We have a really, really good offer, I believe, at Liscard. We've got 23 subjects to choose from, and that is really, I know, quite a large variety, which means that this should be something for everybody, but it can also make the decision as well more tricky um, as well. OK, so you need to look at the subjects carefully, look at the content, look at how they're assessed and go from there. So these are the option block. So we ask that you take a humanities or a language. If you wish to take the English Baccalaureate, I've highlighted it here, you would need to take, if you've taken a humanities here, you would need to take a language there, okay? We then ask that you pick one subject from option block two, which actually does offer you a whole range of subjects there. And then we ask you to pick two from option block three. Now, what I need to say here is, these blocks on here are separate to when I start talking about blocks for timetabling. So we can sometimes have clashes um, with the option choices students have made. And if that's the case, I will come, well, I won't come, I will, I'll get in contact remotely uh, and have a conversation with yourself and, and with the students. So just because they're taken in separate blocks, doesn't necessarily mean that that they will all fit into the timetable. Now, what I do is I do my absolute best. Um, certainly, we ask you in the options process to rank them first, second, third, fourth choice and a first reserve and a second reserve. My job is to try and get as many students their first four option choices. Unfortunately, it doesn't always work out for a number of different reasons. It might be that we don't actually have enough students to run a course. So we might have to recourse them onto something else. It might be that they've got a slightly different combination of subjects to others and, and we've got a clash between subjects. If that happens, I don't just put your reserve in. What I do is I will message you. Normally I will turn up at, at a lesson, but I will message you um, and we can have a conversation about that because sometimes you, you kind of do a bit of rethinking. We have managed to get significantly um, the majority of their option choices, but there are a few. You may be looking at about five to 10% of you that will need to have a conversation with me to make sure that we can get um, your subjects to actually fit. And it might, might mean a little bit of compromise sometimes, or it might be um, I can't run a course because the numbers aren't large enough. Now, last year we had a number of new courses and we've only got one new course this year. So we've got the GCSE in Ethics and Philosophy, we've got the Sports Science course, we've got the BTEC in Music, and we've got the BTEC in Animal Care as well. And a new course for this year is Film Studies. We used to offer media. There is very much similarity and overlap, um, but um, Mrs Archer has been looking really into the courses and the content and the, the relevance and felt that actually the shift to the Film Studies was really at a good time now and the course is, is really good that she's offering there. So have a look at that carefully. You will also notice that it says one or the other for some and that is again to do with this breadth of curriculum. So we offer two business courses. We offer the GCSE in business and we offer the um, OCR, the technical award in business and marketing. We offer two technical awards within sport, sports science or sports studies. Make sure you know the difference between the two and how those courses vary and make your make your choice 
based upon the content and the assessment. And music, we offer GCSE music and we offer a BTEC music course as well. So on those, it's one or the other. I had some people ask me in a tutor group question and answer I did this morning, can you take uh, arts together? So could you take photography and art? Yes, you can. And we have quite a number of students that, that do that as well. And we also offer art textiles as well. OK, so have a look there, particularly at the, the course content. So there is a lot of variety. I've mentioned that already. Those are kind of the key four things that I keep kind of coming up to. Go with what you enjoy. Look at the content. Are you interested in it? How are you going to be assessed? Does that suit you? Um, and your progression. Is it going to help you with your next steps? OK. And to actually make that decision, I'd like you to research, read the booklet, research some of the options there as well. There is going to be a video coming out, which is quite long, um, which just gives a short snippet about each subject. I will try and do it the order that they come in so you can look at the subjects you want. But my advice would be actually watch them, watch them all. OK. Um, you know, think about it. Don't think there's some subjects that are just for boys or girls. Not true. Uh, don't pick a subject because your friends are doing it. Um, you know, always be take the take, you know, take the advice, listen to, you know, siblings or, or friends, but also make your own choice as well, because people have different experiences. We have Mrs. Carlin um, in school as said for independent advice and guidance. She would be more than happy to support any of you. Um, just drop her an email and she will she will help out. And that might be about what do you need to go on to do this this career or I'm interested in this area in the future. OK, so I am at the moment this week going into year nine tutor groups um, virtually and also to PSHE as well to do a drop in question and answer session. The booklets are being posted home for students and then on Wednesday, the 3rd of February, we're going to do our virtual options evening and the way that we're going to do this which is probably the easiest is via teams so i'll be asking subjects to set up a team meeting from between 4 30 to 6 o'clock with the idea being that you just drop in to the subjects that, that you want to and at the end there once you kind of let into that that team meeting uh, you will have members of that subject there that can either in the chat answer your questions or if you want to actually speak to them, they can actually speak to you as well. It will be very much how we do it on the evening, that actually there might be several people in the room, um, but you're all there to kind of find out about the same subject. So I would imagine we'd have some similar questions. If you wanted to have a private conversation about it, you can make that arrangement with the members of staff there online. So Wednesday the 26th of February, which is just after half term, will be the deadline still. That was always the deadline. But I'm going to send out a paper copy of the options form, but I'm also going to be doing an online form as well that I will be emailing to yourselves um, and students. I don't mind which because I'll collate it all together and I will chase any that I don't have um, options forms from. Now, I just want to reassure students that, you know, there's no first come first served or anything, nothing, nothing like that at all in terms of getting a place on the courses that you want. What I do is I wait until I've got the majority of options in and then start working on my timetable to try and make sure as many students as possible get their four options. And as I said, any that um, are not fitting or courses that are not running, I will come back to you and we'll have a chat about it. OK, between March and April, that is when I, I come and have those discussions and I'm going to say by June, we hope earlier, but by June, you should get a letter confirming your choices. I always say to students, really, um, no news is good news. If I've not come back to, to talk to you, it's usually that everything's looking, looking OK. OK, so I'd like students to watch the videos and if you can watch them with them as well, that'd be really helpful. Uh, drop into the subjects that you're interested in. You don't need to go to all unless you're completely undecided and you want to go to all. Drop into subjects that you're thinking about on the 3rd of February. More information will come out. If you are unsure at all about anything, don't hesitate to contact me um, either by email and I, can, and I can give you a phone call back. Um, and the online options for more paper copy to be returned by the 26th of February. It is an exciting time for year nine. 
everything is going ahead as we would normally. They've got exactly the same choices as we always give students. And it really is now up to them what they would what they would like to do. But we are here to support and help them with the process. Any questions, please do not hesitate to get in contact. Thank you very much. Bye.